You guys have your word with you? Good. I am going to go through a couple of scriptures today. I did want to make one announcement. Do not forget uh, that next week, everybody say next week, we spring ahead, right? So what does that mean? That means that we're springing ahead next week. Just in case I forget to put, we forget to put something up on Facebook, we'll do our very best. But don't forget, next week we spring ahead. So church is going to be an hour earlier. So I'm really excited about what the Lord is doing. Who's been enjoying the services? Who's been enjoying what's been going on? Man, last week, last week, right? Last week was fire. God just came in this place. I love when he comes and shows up, and I believe that he wants to do the same. Thank you so much for coming. Please, if it's your first time here, please make sure that you fill out a, uh, one of those cards, and uh, let's get going. Here we go. So a couple of weeks ago, I started talking about Paul. You guys remember me talking about Paul. And so I've been trying to walk through, I've been trying to walk through and just do some studying on my own with Paul. I love, I love Paul. I love, um, you know, he's an amazing apostle. He was one of the apostles in the Bible that are mentioned. I talked about him. And so we're going to kind of start in the book of Philippians and we'll, we'll, we'll be there for a moment and then we will move, uh, we'll move, we'll move, we'll move around just a little bit. But you guys know what happened. The last week I was preaching, I preached about how uh, Paul had a, had a vision. You guys remember that? He had a, he had a vision um, during the night about going to uh, Macedonia. He ended up obeying the voice of God. He ended up in Philippi. Remember, he met the lady named Lydia, um, and uh, they just began to, they began to uh, become friends. They became family, and all of a sudden, there was this blowing up church uh, called Philippians. The, the, I don't know what the name of the church was, but it was the church of Philippi. And so we're now in that book of Philippi, and I kind of want to just talk to you guys about that. We're in the first, we're in the first chapter of Philippians, starting at uh, the first verse. I guess I'll start there, first chapter, and, and we'll start reading. So it says this. It says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The third verse says this. It says, I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you, always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer, every single prayer, because of your partnership. Everyone say partnership. Um, let's say it again. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until uh, the day of Christ Jesus. I just wanted to, to look at that a little bit. and I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about that word. The word that stuck out to me there was partnership. Everybody say it one more time, partnership. We look at Paul in this, in, this, in this particular scripture, and we're looking at him, and we're observing what he is doing. And basically, he is talking about when he first met them and how he is so blessed by, his, uh, by that. He was so glad that he made that turn, that right turn. When he had that vision of Macedonia, he was glad that he made that turn. And he's saying here, since this day until now, I am so glad when I think about all of you guys, and I know that God God is going to continue to do a work because of your partnership. When he speaks of partnership in the book of Philippians, he's not referring to the type of partnership or fellowship is the other word. The main word is fellowship. Now, many of us, we are, if you've been in church a long time, fellowship has become a, it's become a, a word almost like a, a church word. You know how you have church words? Okay. So basically, when I, would, when I would think of fellowship, I would always think of the men's breakfast. They had uh, a brother's fellowship choir. They had, um, they had a fellowship hall. We're going to go and eat in the fellowship hall. Have you guys ever heard that? Maybe the few moments after church where we talk with one another. Many of you guys do that Sunday to Sunday. We don't really see each other throughout the week. But when we get here on Sundays, we, we catch up really quick and say, hey, how's it going? And that's really our fellowship, right? When I was growing up, they would do something called we want to offer the fellowship, the right hand of fellowship. Did you guys, anyone ever been around that? The right hand of fellowship. When they come into the house and, you know, the people, the people who want to be a member of the church, they decide that at that moment they're going 
going to get up and they're going to come to the front of the church and they're going to walk up and everyone's going to be clapping and happy because they are coming into fellowship. But that is not the fellowship that Paul is speaking of. He's not talking about that kind of fellowship. And so when I began to do a a, a study on the word of fellowship, I was reminded that fellowship is more than just a church word. Can I tell you that? Listen to me. Everyone say it with me. Fellowship is more than a church word. God wants to break people of church jargon. Fellowship has become one of those words that over the years has been spoken so much that it falls flat on the ears of people. And even when we read in the Bible, when we read what it says in the word, it's easy for us to say, yeah, 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 yeah. When he's talking about fellowship, he's talking about, um, he's talking about when people come into the church. Like I know I did when I was reading it because you, you read it so long and, and words, they just have these certain meetings. Oh, yeah, he must be talking about the fellowship, Paul. I know that he's talking about about hanging out and connecting and being friends, but, 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 but what does the word really mean? And so what we must do is allow God to breathe new life on the revelation of fellowship, which will cause us to treat each other differently and give us reverence for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Many of you guys may not even know what jargon is. That might be a, a word that's, that's too much for people. Jargon is, um, is special words or expressions that are used by a particular profession or group and are difficult for others to, to understand. Like if I was talking to somebody in church, I might start saying, you know what? I was praying in the spirit and I got a revelation and the Lord began to show me a vision of the earth. And it was, you know, the, the, this is, that is, that's jargon right there. Okay. That is jargon. When you begin to talk to somebody in, on the street, when you go and you talk to somebody and you say, hello, do they start saying, oh yes, God is good. He's so faithful. And you know, if, if, if they are saying that, that is jargon. They know how to talk church ease. They know how to talk church ease. And when we learn how to talk in church words, just like if you were, if you're in the streets and you're, you're talking to someone else, you know, and you have friends that you've been with, you have family that you've been with, you all talk a certain way. Am I telling the truth? You guys talk a certain way. When you're with my wife always says, oh, Preston, when you, when you get with your family, you talk totally different. Because we have, we have family, we have family dynamics, we have family dialect, we have family conversation, we have a way that we talk, right? And so that is how it is with many of you. Many of you, once you, you know, you go to a certain area of town, you go to a certain, you go to a certain part of town and all of a sudden, a, a, a part of the United States, you start saying, I don't know why I'm talking like those Bostonians up there. You, you start talking like them. You start saying ka and you start saying lobster and you know how they, how they talk over there and they have certain words that they use for things that we don't use here. Because it is their jargon, it is their, their, their culture, their, their understanding, their subculture speaks a certain way. And many times in the house of God, that is how it is. And what happens is, is that when we, uh, as a culture, begin to take words like fellowship and, and, and love and Holy Spirit, and we take those words and they just begin to become watered down and they just become church words. And we've got to break out of that so that we can understand again what God really means when he says fellowship. You guys with me today? So the reason that this particular type of fellowship is mentioned so many times is because it is definitive of the type of relationship we are supposed to have with Jesus and with each other. The word uh, that I'm getting ready to tell you is mentioned 18 times in the New Testament. I actually believe that there was uh, there there are some times probably that it was referred to in the Old Testament, but it is definitely seen 18 times in the New Testament. The Apostle John also speaks to uh, the church in 1 John 1, 3. Can you just open up your Bible with me again? Go to 1 John 1 and 3 about this type of fellowship. Let me know. See, they're, they're so fast that there's no need for me to turn. 
That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. Let me tell you something about John as we're, as we're looking at this. John was an apostle, and he was one that had actually encountered God. You remember how we just did, you remember how we just did communion, and we just did that whole thing about uh, Matthew 26 and 26? John was there. John, this is the John that I'm talking about. John the Revelator, he was there with Jesus. He had encounters with Jesus, also known as John the Beloved. He had a great relationship with Jesus. He had intimacy with Jesus. And so he says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So John was in this place and he wanted to make sure that we understood that he was sharing with us so that we could have the same encounter with Jesus that he had had. And so, through time and translation, the word partnership, the word fellowship, I've already told you that it's lost its power, but the actual word that was used in the Bible, Greek translation is koinonia. I'm going to say it again. The word is koinonia, pronounced koinonia. And sometimes when we when we listen to what we're, we're talking about on Sundays, it's easy just to get past words but not really understand the meaning. And we have to stay here because this word is so important in the church and this is what is missing in the body of Christ today. We don't get the full gist of it. We don't understand it. But koinonia is the special relationship that we have with each other, which is what Paul was talking about. He talked about that in that scripture in, 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 first, uh, in Philippians. He talks about the, 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 the fellowship and the partnership. It's the special relationship that we have with each other because of our relationship with Jesus. It's what we have in common, what you and I you know, why it is that we, we come to church and, 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 and I, I don't see people on any other, any other day, but I come into the house of God and, and there is something that connects you and I. There is something that, that will connect us. And that thing that connects us is the fellowship that we have with Jesus. We have lots of different numerators, but the bottom number, the denominator, is always the same. It's Jesus. And when we look at the book of Acts, uh, Acts 2 and 42, it talks about fellowship once again. And it talks about uh, fellowship. It talks about how when they were changed and their lives were, were, were encountered by God, they began to have fellowship and they began to commit themselves to fellowship and to prayer. Fellowship, the breaking of bread, koinonia, and to prayer. And so it speaks of your relationship. It speaks of your relationship with God, which is what, uh, which is what, which is what John was talking about in 1 John 1, 3. He talks about our connection to God, right? When we talk in Acts 2, 42, uh, they talk about Luke is telling the story of how they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. That word, that, that phrase there, breaking of bread, uh, is also koinonia. It's, it's the ability to be connected. So it's talking about being connected to God and being connected to man. Being connected to God and being connected to man. God, man. God, man. If I was really good at my, my videos and I was, I was moving fast and I, or I, was, I was not procrastinating, I probably would have had a, uh, a sign of a cross up. But it's God and man. So our, our vertical relationship and our horizontal relationships, which is with each other, those relationships meet and they meet at an intersection which creates the cross. Relationship between God and man. 
Another word for, for koinonia is generosity. 2 Corinthians 9.13 talks about our generosity, our ability to participate and to connect financially because we are in relationship with God and with each other. Koinonia. Koinonia is active participation in Christian community. But it's also our connection and our ability to connect with Jesus Christ. Koinonia is mentioned over and over, like I said, but it, it actually means that the people, they were, not just, they were not just meeting on Sunday mornings, but they began to do life together. They began to have relationship with one another that brought them together. And because of their relationship with Jesus Christ, they had this intimate connection with each other because of their relationship with Christ. And in our houses today, in the church today, what we lack is we lack the intimate connection with each other because we lack intimate connection with Jesus Christ. And I believe that the Lord wants to get us back to that place. He wants to, to bring us back to that place. He wants to bring us back to a place where we are having relationship with him. John says, I want you to, uh, that we have seen and we've heard so that we, so that you could have the same experience and encounter that we have. And when you go on in that scripture, it begins to talk about how we are called to walk in the light as he is in the light. But I want to tell you, you cannot have koinonia. You cannot have true intimate relationship with him if you are not willing to walk in the light. God wants us to walk in the light. He wants us to have relationship with him. He doesn't want us just to be Facebook friends. And many of you, that's what you have with Jesus. You're Facebook friends. He's your Insta. He's following you. You're following him on Instagram. You're following him on Facebook. And if he says something that offends you, you just, you give him a break for a couple of days. You snooze him. If he says uh, something that, that, that makes you mad, you unfriend him. But that's not what intimate relationship is about. I'm in an intimate relationship with my wife. I love my wife. We've been married for 19 years. And every one of those 19 years hasn't been good years. If I can be very honest with you. Every one of those years hasn't been the best year. There's been some times, right? Everybody has times. But because of my intimate connection with her and my commitment to her and hers to me, we are able to weather the storms. Right, we're able to weather the storms because of koinonia, because we love each other and we love him. And the cross is in the middle of our relationship. And many of us in the house of God, it must be the same way. There has to be another level of fellowship. It cannot just be about, it can't just be about eating together, right? It can't just be about hanging out together and, and, and talking for a few minutes in the, in the, in the, in the lobby out there and, and, and filling out your name. But we have to get into a place where we want to be with each other. See, the thing about the people of the way, the Christians, is that, you know, it, it's easy for us because we live in a democracy. And so nobody's tripping on you if you decide that you want to be a Christian. Nobody is saying, oh, well, look at you. They may, they may accuse you a little bit. They may persecute you a little bit. You may feel a little bit, but nobody's getting dropped in, in, in boiling oil, <laughs> right? Nobody is getting, uh, no one's getting hung on crosses upside down. Nobody's getting their heads chopped off. Not here. We live in a free place. And so what happened is, is that these people when they came together, it was like all they had was Jesus and each other. 
because they, they, they literally did what Jesus said. They, they, they took up their cross, they counted up the cost, and they decided to follow him. And because there's no real, how can I say this? There's no real, um, there's no real expectation of us in our world today to, to actually follow after him with real loyalty and with real, with real inspiration. You know, no one's really, no one's really judging that. It's like words like koinonia, they just go out. Or words like having intimacy with Jesus, they just kind of go out the door. Words like having intimacy with one another and having true relationship with one another, those kind of ideas, they just go out the door. But I believe that in this time, the only way that the church is really going to grow and that we are really going to step into who God wants us to be is that our understanding and our, our revelation of relationship has to change. It has to change. We got to change. And so that means that, that we prefer each other over ourselves sometimes. That means that we take our walk with Christ more seriously. Yeah? That means that we, we spend time with the Lord and we learn to love each other. You know, this is not about loving ourselves. That's the biggest that's the biggest hoax in the world. The greatest love of all is learning to love yourself. It's the greatest love. It's not what Jesus says. We have to get back to understanding him so that we can, we can really grow and become who God wants us to be. You guys hear me this morning? I love praising God and I love high praise and I love you know when the the Holy Spirit comes in and he just he he makes us you know we have these manifestations of the glory of God in our lives I love that but if we don't have that that main thing that they had this is what this is what was the most special this is what was the most special about the 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 uh the the, the early church is their ability to have relationship with one another and their ability to love one another and to be there for one another and to, to have, have this relationship that caused loyalty and that caused love and that caused intimacy. This is what made them strong. And this is what makes us weak. The lack of these things makes us weak. Because many of us, we spend too much time going this way. The others, we spend too much time going this way. But God is wanting us to go this way. He's wanting to bring us into this place with him, this, this place that causes us to have true relationship, true fellowship. Now let me tell you something, fellowship is not Hook a Messiah rolling all over the place. That's not fellowship. Do you hear me? Fellowship is not coming into the house of the Lord expecting to have a prophetic word every time you come in. Fellowship is not getting mad when, when, when the word that they give you is, 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 is off. Uh, they, they missed the word, so I'm, I, can't, I can't go there. That's not fellowship. And when we have true fellowship with him, our lifestyles line up with, with what we're talking about here. Our lifestyle will line up with koinonia. And you can't have that relationship with him if you're living all kinds of ways. Who wants to have a different type of relationship with God. I mean, I want to have a different relationship with him. I want to have, I want to walk with him like Enoch walked with God in the coolness of the day. He walked with God, it says. It says that, that, that they were friends. It says that Abraham was a friend of God. Moses encountered 
God in such a way that he was there and the Lord showed him his glory. And you can't be a, you can't be a person that is, that is just looking for, 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 for those types of encounters and not be looking for encounters with people. Looking for encounters with people. And I'm going to tell you that there's something wrong if, you know, you don't have friends and, and all you do is, is just, all you do is, is nothing and you don't, you don't have any type of relationships with people and, and especially in the church that you go to or in, 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 in Christianity. You don't have any relations with anybody that, that is like you. This is the one thing that we have in common is Jesus. Come on, there's something wrong with that. If all your friends, and don't tell me that you're being an evangelist either. Oh, I'm just evangelizing. That's how come none of my friends are, are Christians. I'm an evangelist. This is the main thing that brings us together. Jesus is the author and the finisher. Jesus is the glue. Jesus is the reason that you and I are sitting in this place today. And so if Jesus has taken time to get to know us and he has taken time to prepare a way for us, we weren't even on the earth yet. Listen, we weren't even in the earth. We weren't, nobody was thinking about us except for him. Except for him. Shouldn't we take time to get to know the people that are around us? Shouldn't we take time to get to know our neighbors that are in the house, the ones that are coming? Yes, we should. We must take time to get to know each other and to just spend one-on-one -on -one time with each other. This is a part of fellowshipping. But the other part of fellowshipping is having a true and pure walk with Jesus Christ. Y'all hear me on that one? I'm not going to go down a list on what you can't do. Because you already know what you need to be doing. But it's interesting how they seem so different, but yet they are so much alike. That the word, the description of the word is the same in all of these passages. And the only way that you can really become like-minded, the only way that we can really become like-minded, I'll tell you what, if you were spending time with somebody, if you spend time with somebody, you begin to talk like that person. If you spend relationship, if, you, if you're spending time with someone and you guys are hanging out, you begin to talk like that person. You, you laugh. You guys, you will have certain conversations that are, you'll say certain words. You'll say certain words that are just alike. They're just, oh, yeah, I can tell you've been with so-and-so. Yeah, I know that you've been this way. And that's how it is when you're in the presence of God. You'll begin to talk like him. You'll begin to live like him. You'll begin to move like him. You'll begin to want to be like him. And that's how it should be when you're with people that, that you're connected with in your body of believers. The culture should be that you want to be with each other. And we don't kick each other, we don't kick others out, but we, we begin to love each other, we begin to learn each other, we begin to speak alike, and we begin to talk alike, and we begin, because we're, we're connected with Jesus. I know this isn't revelatory for some of you. There's another word right there, that's jargon. I know this isn't revelatory for some of you, because I, I know that a lot of you guys are above this kind of stuff. But God is wanting to bring to your attention your relationship with him and your relationship with men and women. Because he wants to bring you back to the cross. Isn't that something? He just wants to bring you back to the cross. 
He wants to bring you back to him. Everything that we do, every word that we say, everything, our relationship should always bring us back to that place of koinonia, that place of relationship, that place of, that place of intimacy with each other and with Christ. So I want to encourage you today that as you leave this place, as you walk away from here, that you, that you think deeply about how you can have relationship with others, how you can have relationship with God and with men, with God and man. Come on, let's, how is your relationship, how can you make your relationship become like the cross? Because that's just who Jesus was. Jesus, he he was, as, at first we were all walking this way. We were all vertical, you know, we were all vertical. And he came and he gave us a way so that we could actually ascend and be with him. And so let us, as we leave this place, as we walk away from here, as we think about our lives, let us make decisions to have true relationship, not just fellowship hall, not just eating pizza together and soup and those things which are great. But how we actually step in and become family and become one. That's going to be hard because I realize that a lot of you guys, you don't know each other. I went to a church once, and the church, the only thing that people had connection with was the pastor. And so when something happened to that pastor, they didn't, know how to, they didn't know how to respond to each other. And the church fell apart. God is not for having one personality. We've got to connect and learn how to be weaved and how to, how to be with each other, not just having a connection because you might like to hear me preach or you like what my wife says or whatever. You like to hear her preach and prophesy. But we've got to go beyond that. We've got to go to the next level now. And so I'm encouraging you all to let's go to the next level with each other. Let's go from just having fellowship, the American word, to having koinonia. Everybody say koinonia. I know. That's one of those words. Now that's... That's not jargon. That's Greek right there. That's Greek. Koinonia. So you guys, let's go out to eat together. Yeah. But let's pray together as well. Let's learn each other's families' names. But then let's also learn about the name above every other name, right? And when we do these things, it will make us stronger. It makes us stronger as people. It makes us stronger as family. It will make us stronger as a church body. It will make us stronger in the city. So I'm going to pray really quickly. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Hi, thank you so much for watching today's video, but don't stop here. Be a part of what God is doing here by liking us on Facebook and sharing this word of encouragement with a friend today. Also, if you'd love to partner with us, you can text GIVE to 509-571-2345, or you can go to redeemcity.com and click the donate button today. Thank you so much for your giving, and hey, we would love to see you in person. Come check us out. We're located here in Yakima, Washington at 2701 West Lincoln Avenue, and we kick off our Sunday services at 10 a.m. And I got an announcement for you. If you love podcasts, if you love prayer, then we got a powerful, powerful podcast for you to watch. It's called The Prayer Room. It's with Pastor Preston Jones and Pastor Becky Jones. Go check them out. You can follow them on Spotify, iTunes, and even Charisma Podcast Network. Go and subscribe today. Also, Redeem City Church has a YouTube channel. You can find them on Redeem City Church Yakima, and there you can find all our Sunday videos archived for you to watch. Please consider to subscribe and have a very blessed day.